okay p4.2 charge and current and um, when it comes to charge and current i'm going to use a, um, a water analogy so if we imagine a river and we wanted to know how much water was flowing through that river and how much water was getting uh, into this lake for example what we'd need to do is we need to say How fast is the river flowing? So that would be, which is basically that'd be a measure of something like uh, liters per second. And you'd want to know how long has it been filling up that lake for. to know how much water there was in the lake it would just be this how fast it's flowing to the current of the river so um, in liters per second times by the number of seconds that the river has been filling up that lake for and can you see that those two seconds cancel so you're left with the number of litres that are in that lake, okay? That's if it was water. Now if we're talking about electricity, these words are very, very similar, okay? So for electricity, the current is the rate of flow of charge. And if you know that, then you can work out a lot of the other bits about electricity. So... got is you've got your charge so that's how much water in the previous example so in the one it was how much water this one's how much charge and it equals the current which is how fast the charge is flowing through the circuit just like the current of the river is how fast the river is flowing times by how long it takes that current to flow so how long is that river filling up that lake for okay now um the symbols for this are q for charge i for current and t for time and um, don't ask me why i and q just basically because this ran out of letters okay and the units are uh, this one is going to be in something called the coulomb current is in amps and time taken is in seconds and if you forget the charge is measured in coulombs you could always say amp seconds which is just a s amps times by seconds a s if you wanted to okay so um i always find it really handy i think that's one of the two main equations that you need to remember about electricity because you need to know what the definition of charge is and equally you can use that definition of charge to work out what the definition of uh, current is so current would just simply be charge per second okay so then you can say that um, amps so then it's just charge per second which would be coulombs per second okay coulombs per second with the charge um, and the next thing we need to know is we need to know about some symbols some circuit symbols and I'm going to give you some clues to help you because circuit symbols confuse everybody but they're actually really really easy to learn because there's only four basic types 
Okay, so let's start with the energy source first, okay? So the energy source is going to be a cell. Or a battery. And as you can see, the only difference between a cell and a battery is that the cell has one and the battery has more than one. Okay? And that's 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 literally the only difference. Now you have to remember which one's the positive and which one's the negative. And the way that I remember which one's the positive and which one's the negative is I simply look at the symbol here and I think, okay, well, I can snap this one in two. So I can snap that line, so it's now made two lines. And I can then put those two lines together as a cross. I can't snap that one in two because it's, it's already only one line. So that one is just my negative. Okay, So this one's always going to be the negative and this one is always going to be the positive. Think about snapping the big one in two to make a cross. And then you can remember which way that the current is going to flow because if you think about it, the current is the rate of flow of charge and electrons will always go from the positive to the negative Sorry, they've had from the negative to the positive. So the electrons, they're negative. So they're going to go to the positive. So if I draw my circuit here, then my electrons are always going to go round this way. That's the direction so my electrons are going to go in. But unfortunately, for us, Benjamin Franklin didn't know about electrons. So when he discovered electricity, he didn't know that electrons were negative. So for our definition of current, current is the rate of flow of charge, okay, charge per second. But we've said that we're sending around a negative charge this way, which means that the current is going in the opposite way, okay? If that's confusing, don't worry too much. Hopefully I've simplified it a little. This one is the positive, this one is the negative. Same charges repel, so the electrons at this end get pushed round to this end. But because the electrons are negative, the current is flowing in the opposite direction. Okay. Don't worry too much about that if that's confusing. Right symbols. I've already done two symbols so far. They were the cell and the battery. And now we're getting on to the actual now we're getting on to more of the components. Okay, so the first one I want to show you is this one. Okay. And that component is a resistor. And all a resistor is is wire. Okay? And the key bit about a resistor is that we know how hard, if this was a 100 ohm resistor, because the resistance is measured in ohms, this symbol here, then I know exactly how hard it is for electricity to get through that wire. So it's made to a very specific size and made out of very specific materials, so I know exactly how hard it is for electricity to get through it. That's the advantage of a resistor. Now, as you can see by its shape, it is a rectangle, okay? It's a rectangle. So if you ever see a component that is a rectangle, the first thing that you need to be thinking is resistor. And it doesn't matter what else it's got. So this one here, that one's got a thin wire going through the middle. So this one is a fuse, which is a type of resistor, okay? And it just, it's just one with a very low resistance, which melts easily if you um, give it too much current. Okay, and the next one this one is a heater, and this type of resistor gets hot. 
Okay, and then the next one. Looks like this. And I'll come back to that one in a minute because some people find that one confusing. So we'll come back to this one in a minute and you'll be able to figure this one out really easily. So it's got a circle around it and it's got two arrows going into it. Okay, I'll come back to that one later. I'll leave a note for myself to let myself know that I'm going to come back to that one later. And when I do, you're going to be able to explain exactly why it's that shape. Okay, next one. This one has got an arrow on it. All that means is that you can set the arrow wherever you want and you can vary the resistance. So that one is known as a variable resistor. And they are all rectangles. Every single one of them is a rectangle. Okay, so the next type of uh, component I want to tell you about is um, the ones that are to do with circles. Okay, so circles. And this is the circle that you might have seen first. So that one, which you know is a bulb, and it's to do with light. And any time you see a circle, you want to be thinking light, okay? So it doesn't matter what else is going on with that circle, you want to be thinking light. So if I go back to our previous one, I said it's got a circle around it, which means that you know it's going to be something to do with light. And you know it's got a rectangle in it, so you know it's going to be something to do with a resistor. Which only leaves what these arrows mean. And these arrows are going in, which means that it depends on it. So light dependent resistor or LDR. Okay? And if the arrows are going out, it would be emitting. But these arrows are going in, so it's dependent. So the light dependent resistor. Okay, so I'm going to draw you another one, which I'm going to come back to later. expect you all to be able to do this one in a minute. So you know it's got circles, you know it's to do with light, but we haven't done triangles yet, we haven't done arrows going out yet. So I'm going to tell you what the arrows going out means. The arrows going out means it means it's emitting. Arrows out is emitting. a diode yet, but a diode, it has, um, the property of a diode is that only let current flow in one direction. So on our previous diagram, we've got current flowing like this and electrons flowing like that. Well, if you put a diode in here, it would only let the current, it would only work if the current was flowing this way. It wouldn't work if I swapped the big plus and then small minus the other way around. 
and send the current around the other way, that then wouldn't work. And that's why it's a triangle, because you're thinking it's stopping the oncoming current, okay? So let's go back to this one that I said earlier. So you know it's a circle, so you know it's to do with light. You know the arrows out means that it is emitting. And you know now that the triangle means it's a diode. So light emitting diode or L E D. Okay. Um, so that's all the components um, in a circuit. You've got two more components that I'll talk about later, which are to do with measuring the properties of a circuit. But all you need to remember is that rectangles are resistors, triangles are diodes, circles are to do with light, and arrows going in means it's dependent, arrows going out means it's emitting. Okay, they're the key factors.